Well everyone, it's time for another Rapid Randomizer review, and today's story is... Last Christmas. If you want to be surprised by Doctor Who, try a Rapid Randomizer review! I'm going to get so we're just a few years ago now, in 2014, and this was Peter Capaldi's first Christmas special. Um, I have to admit, watching the end of Death in Heaven and halfway through the credits, Santa Claus bursts into the TARDIS. What a great hook! And then we get a wonderful performance by Nick Frost as Santa Claus. He brings that wonderful sort of Nick Frost quality of being down to earth while also being a believable Santa. It's a great combination. Clara is back and still grieving for Danny Pink and we get really quite a good base under siege story happening at this base on the South Pole. We also have a wonderful turn from Michael Troughton, son of classic series doctor Patrick Troughton as one of the crew on the base. In fact I love the entire crew and I seem to recall everyone did at the time. Everyone wanted Shona to be the next companion, which, oh, she's lovely and wonderful. She's got a Lucy Miller style of quality to it. If you don't know who Lucy Miller is, check out uh, the Eighth Doctor Adventures with Sheridan Smith as Lucy Miller. But Shona also has a sort of naivety to her. She is a really accessible character in that you know, she's not an expert with aliens like Clara is at this point. She's scared, but also wants to give everything a go and wants to prove her worth. I think she would have been a great companion. The plot itself, you know, it's pretty standard. For a dream world story, which often don't work, this one actually works quite well in creating the dream world. And it establishes the rules of it really well. And plays on the fear that if you die in a dream, you die in real life. The head crabs, they're a cute Doctor Who monster. I'm kind of glad we haven't seen them again. I think it would be diminishing returns, but they're really good here. Peter Capaldi's Doctor is starting to soften. It looks like the production team has looked at what didn't quite work in his first season, where he might have been a bit too nasty and a bit too abrasive. So his critical lines here, things like, um, you've got a horror movie called Alien that's so racist, no wonder people invade you. I found that really, really funny, and it, yeah, it kind of made me think, you know, we've shown Alien on TV how many times? That's going out into the universe, guys. Um, we might be sending out the wrong message. <laughs> Mind you, we've already, you know, sent out probes with nudes on them. We also have the return of Danny Pink in what I think is quite a touching scene, especially when he says that he didn't die saving the world, you know, he died saving Clara. And that's such a Doctor Who thing, you know, the Doctor doesn't do what he does necessarily to save planets, he does it to save individual people, by saving the planet that they happen to be on. I'm not quite sure with Danny dictating terms to Clara about how she can grieve, and indeed we'll see next season, that's not really successful. And I kind of wish this was the last story for Clara. I really like the scene with Clara as an old woman who's had a full and fantastic life. Okay, the Doctor's come back too late, but she has still lived and she has still seen places and gone places. For this story, I give it 7 out of 10. It's, it's good average Doctor Who, it's entertaining. It doesn't knock it out of the park, but it doesn't particularly do much wrong. Um, yeah, I find it really enjoyable.